All right. What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to our July's window shopping episode. So every month, I like to do a little price check on the NA servers. So what we do is we look at the central market, see the trends of items, whether it's going up and down. And I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on a lot of things. So this is more tailored towards uh, mid to end game players. But I mean, like if you're a beginner, it's good to know anyway. Um, so all the relevant items and new trends with like crystals and stuff that I think might be uh, interesting to take a look at. And so, yeah, every month we do this and just like to see the trends of everything. So let's start off with the weapons because those are probably the highest priority for a lot of people. Um, people who are looking into black stars and or if you're a beginner still using uh, dandy or something we'll just see it's, what it's all about so uh ever since they made that central market change i think it's, this was a few years ago so it's like not even a new thing where the prices are like min maxed at the same thing for all weapons it doesn't really matter what we look at nowadays so my opinions first of all if you are a new player and you're thinking about getting zarka versus often the answer is like 99% Zarka. So there's a small bracket where often is better. It's like up until you can get to like 261 with Zarka, then often is better. But then Zarka, if you plan on doing any sort of PvP or just anything in uh, end game in general, that's the way to go. <clears throat> and then people will ask if it's better to get a pen black or not pen black star, pen Zarka versus a Tet black star. And honestly, it depends where you're at in the game because one is 15 billion and one is like 7 billion or 6. So that's the difference. Um, generally, if you do a lot of grinding or PvE in general, Blackstar is just always the way. I do consider Pen like Blackstar the best in slot, but getting it to Pen is the hard part. So anyway, let's look at the trends on Blackstar. So... Over the past few months, last time we did this video was June, and so it was like 15, roughly 15 billion, the same. And it's going up, surprisingly. I don't know why, but it's going up, I guess. People just need more black stars, I guess. Well, actually, here's the thing. With the recent Festa or the Heidel Ball, everyone got Jay's Hammers and Cronstones. So I assume people are just buying a Tet one to slam it and hoping for the best. That's my only guess of why everything's going up. But the price, for the most part, is like roughly the same as last month. What a big surprise. All right. So um, I just out of wild curiosity, how much are offense? I don't think these are worth getting. Seven billion. 7.4 billion versus a Zarka at, well, sold out, but seven. Uh, just whatever you do, don't get baited. Like, I know people are all AP monkeys and just like, oh, more AP, better. And uh, trust me when I say this, accuracy is very important, especially at late game. And if you are a pve -er, then you might as well just invest in the black star but yeah accuracy is very expensive and if you're going for accuracy accessories late game trust me when i say they're expensive like even if you look at a tet accuracy accessory does it like 20 to 30 billion it's kind of wild so yeah eventually your end game goal is to get triple black stars and everything but until then just get what you think is important either zarka or black star all right, um, let's look at Awakenings. So how many of you guys have been playing this game for over five years? You guys remember when Dragon Slayers, people were actually buying these to enhance? Back when Duvencroon came out, or what was that region? I guess Odraxi, not Odraxi, the one before it, Duvencroon, the one with Garmoth. People would actually unironically enhance these even though they were straight up just worse than a dandy. But it was because, like, the dandelions were hard to get back in the day. And getting it to pen was a lot difficult um, just for enhancing. Whereas this one, it used, like, a different material. Like, repairing it wasn't so bad. And now that Blackstar came out, 
I think these are still good for like entry level or let's say if you do the Jatina quest and get it for cheaper than what it's worth, then it's probably fine. But once again, black stars are probably the way to go. And <clears throat> here's the thing. Here is where people get a little bit confused. So if you have a dandelion at pen and you have like level four capris in it, I do believe it gives some extra stats to the point where it is a little bit better than a Tet Black Star. Like you might get some accuracy. I'm not completely sure how the brackets work. I don't, it's been a while. But if you are just trying to min max your money, and even if you're going to sell it back later, you're probably going to lose money, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, I can understand why people want to go dandies or like mid tier. Because these are like 17 billion, which is surprising because that is a very high trend. That is what we saw from last month. So as of last month, this was 16. Now it went up to like almost 17. So the price increased by 1 billion. I also, once again, like I said before, I do believe this is probably because of the Jay's Hammer Festa thing. People want to like YOLO tap their uh, black stars. And then if it sells, it sells for like 160 billion or something like that. So, that's a thing. Um, I have a feeling in a few weeks I'll just return back to like the normal 16 something. But I guess it's just for a few few weeks or something. But that's an interesting thing to look at. It went up by one bill. But I think another thing that people are also doing is they're trying to buy a Tet right now because uh, they announced that uh, the Megu's Awakening is coming out soon. So they're probably just going to buy it and use a coupon over. But that's I don't think that's really the reason. I think people just got the Jay's hammers and just want to slam it. But they, people could be trying to get a Tet just to coupon over for uh, Megu Awakening whenever that comes out. And let's look at sub weapons. So if you're trying to enhance your profit right now, like trying to get a Tet Blackstar to sell, Awakening is definitely the way to go. Now, let's look at offhands. Now, this one's a little bit tricky to talk about because it really depends on what you do in this game. So when you're when people ask me, OK, so what offhand should I use? The answer really is like for me, it's like if you have a black star, it's for grinding. If you have a Nuber, it's for PVP. And then if you have like a accuracy offhand, it's because you also PVP and you need it. It's more for the um, end game, higher end players. But I think if you are a general player, I would start with Kudum first because that allows you to grind better and get more money an hour and then allow you to transition into whatever else you want. So this is actually one that's a little bit trickier to talk about <clears throat> because Black Stars versus Kudums, it's, uh, it's not that much of a difference to the point where if you have a pen Kudum at Capris 20, and you're thinking of converting over into a black star. So here's what you're actually trading off at the pen level. So it's hard for me to show you because it doesn't show you Capris level stats. But I'm pretty sure you are trading off uh, a little bit of accuracy. Well, keep in mind, this is very end game at Capris 20 Kudum versus pen black star. You're trading a little bit of accuracy, like two to three points of it for this extra monster damage like a few points of that and so i think that's overall okay it's exclusively for pve but most classes realistically if you're pvping you're probably using a nuver or an accuracy offhand so it's more or less fine and realistically will you notice a difference probably not and uh obviously nuvers are Let's see, 8 billion. That is a hard decline. That You know that stonks meme, but it's like the reverse stonks meme? Yeah, that's Nuva right now. Um, well, Kudums are 9 billion. It's at like an all-time low, so I think if it, you're trying to buy one, now would be a good time. And black stars, fourteen and a half billion. Um, 
I think I would have to actually do a little bit of research to see how much monster damage you're gaining at Tet versus a Pen. Actually, no, let's... Uh, it also depends on how much Capris you have. Okay, so you have 62 monster uh, AP against monsters versus a Tet one, which is 64. So you're basically paying 5 bill for 2 AP effectively against monsters. Is it worth it? Um... If it puts you up into the bracket where you, like, your, your stats actually matter and it's, like, pushing you up into, a, like, meeting a soft cap, then yeah. But I think it's better to, or realistically cheaper to caprice your Kudum up until a certain point, like, C7 or 14. And then once you get a pen offhand then it might be worth, like, trading it off. Yeah, you're probably spending or losing a lot on taxes later on. But if you're trying to get incremental gains instead of just trying to slam a pen black star, I think it's better to get a Kudum and then Capris it up instead of uh, buying it outright. Um. Okay, so that's interesting. That's what we wanted to look at. So let's look at armors and stuff right now because that is a fun activity. So I'm going to talk about this once because it's effectively going to be the same for most of these armors. Your ultimate goal is to get the Fallen God, Labresca, and Dawn Gloves. All of those are considered the best in slot endgame. But most of these are like the yellow tier and what you should get. So ultimately, when it comes down to Griffin versus Gaia for your helmet, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you are trying to min-max and get the most out of your stats in the meantime while you're using it, I do believe the all resistance 5% is worth more than the extra 100 HP pool. Um, mostly because if you are a PvPer, we all know this game's balance is very questionable, and sometimes desync is a thing. So being able to resist a CC probably could mean you just live in a fight because... As you guys know, once you're past this 260 AP mark and you're PvPing, whoever gets CC'd first generally loses the fight. And then 1 HP, that's not helping you. Being able to resist a CC will help you. But very minimal. Uh, will you notice it that much? Probably not. And then your ultimate goal <clears throat> is to get it to Capris 10, turn it into a Labresca, and then slam it so what fail stacks would i use if you are enhancing it yourself like i personally have made everything to tet myself except for the gloves right now it's a try i keep failing i'll get it eventually but if you have a base one i would start at 80 stacks up to 100 and then from uh base to pry yeah 80 to 100 pry to duo i would do like 120 to 180 and then duo to try like 160 to 200 and then from try to tet you literally just use the highest stack you can because these are very expensive these are more expensive than pen black stars and so i believe that using the highest stack you can within reason like i would say probably like a 250 all the way up to maybe uh 300 probably and then if you have a 300 i would honestly save that for like pen accessories the high tier pen accessories that is but anyway um yeah tet's hard to get make smart decisions let me roll this dice real quick okay and then armors are a little bit different because here's where things actually matter so once again as i said for everything before to fall on god best in slot what you should do just talked about this but the difference between these two is you should get the red nose armor because getting it to Capris 10 is slightly cheaper. And by that, I mean, it requires less Capris stones. And so it'll be overall cheaper to get it to 10 and the ultimate same goal of convert converting it into a fallen God is the same process, but one is cheaper. So that's why you should get red nose nowadays. But back in the day, people chose the dim tree armor because the 200 HP 
uh, pool of health was a lot better than the increased recovery, which I think recovery in this game is a meme because it's not even that much. But if they buffed it in the future, uh, it might be competitive. But as of right now, HP pool is better than HP recovery. So, yeah, same process of everything as we talked about before. And in terms of gloves, this is where things branch off a little bit. So Beg's gloves are the accuracy version, accuracy DR, as people call it. And then Lieber's is the evasion uh, spec. So when you see other content creators say like, oh, I'm evasion or I'm DR or I have this build, um, just keep in mind, one thing does not work for all classes. It depends on what class you play. So if you're confused, Feel free to ask, I'll help you with that. But generally, the best way to figure this out yourself is you look at your class passives and um, if you get evasion, chances are you're an evasion class. If you don't, then you choose accuracy. But anyway, with the Dawn's gloves, Dan's gloves, whatever they call it, um, the blue one is the accuracy. Basically, if you go begs, you get the blue one. If you're Liebers, you get the green one. So essentially, that's what it is. Yes, I know that this has two more DP at the start than the, this one does, but the uh, damage reduction trade-off is a little bit what you should be looking at. So, um, Here's one thing that I would talk about right now. Right now, as of July 3rd, these gloves are very expensive, like 265 to the point where... Even if you had the money, I would try to make this yourself, even slamming it off vendor crons, just because these are very expensive. And um, here's what I would do. If you had enough crons and everything, I would just try to make it yourself. Use the same stacks that I went through. Even that try, I used a 200. Uh, going for Tet, I'm using a 245. I also used 245 for these two at Tet as well. So, yeah, this is one of the items I would highly recommend making yourself instead of buying it just because it's very expensive. But if you're watching this video for some reason, like six months down the line, um, check the prices. And if it's more than a pen black star, I would just recommend making it yourself. If it's cheaper than a pen black star, just go ahead and buy it. So, yeah. This is one of the tricky ones for new players because you're probably... Well, I guess not really new players because if you are a new player, you probably shouldn't even be worrying about these right now. This is like an end game item. But yeah, just keep in mind these are two different. And this goes the same for the shoes. Um, obviously, we don't have the new shoes yet. Wait two years and come back. But this is the DR version. This is the evasion version. Um, Pen Ergons. Nine bill. Cool. 10 muskins, 9.5, basically the same thing. So, yeah, that's about it. But let's talk about accessories real quick. I'll go over this really quickly. Ominous rings, these are accuracy accessories, which means you're trading off AP for more accuracy. It's mostly for PVPers at very high level. Tungrads are the AP version Basically, people who are trying to meet caps and just get the most AP. That's the way you go. Eye of the Ruins is a step up from Crescent Rings. These are the AP versions. But the things you get additionally is the max HP per level. And so I actually thought about it. And I was like, before I got my tongue grads, I'm like, do I want Eye of the Ruins? Because one, these are like 78 billion or, well, yeah, 78 billion versus Tungrads, which are 120. So what you're looking at is, do you think 130 HP at pen level is worth the trade-off for one AP? So basically, what are you trading off? Uh, one AP. So if you look at these versus the HP, and then you get to put the cup on it, which gives you another 125. So effectively... Well, I mean, it, I guess it's just 130, but essentially, how much do you value 260 HP? And if the answer is 
um what is it 80 120 40 billion for one ap then get what you think is right i have two tongue grads because i didn't pay 120 back when i was going for it i was going i think i paid like 100 bill for each of them which is also very high for one ap but i figured if they ever added brackets like past whatever i have i'm definitely up there but i think for most people realistically with the amount of free stats they give everyone getting eye of the ruins for survivability is not a bad choice um but as you all know everyone gets a free pen crescent from jatina's at least once and uh that's a good 55 to 60 billion saved so if you're a new player looking for one of the jatina accessories I think it ultimately depends where you're at in the game, but I think for most people, the Pen Crescent Ring is probably the best option. And if they, if you get it late, because let's say when they introduced the system for me, I was already pretty geared, so I chose the Narc Earring just because it allows me to have additional DP and allows me to grind new spots that I might have thought was more dangerous before. Um, so that was my choice, but ultimately I think their pen crescent is the best for most people. And then everything else is uh Monos is life skill, Kadri's are for DP, DR memes, and like realistically everything else is just kind of a meme. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so necklaces. Debereka, best in slot right now. The most expensive, very hard to get. Um, highest AP thing that only realistically end game players should worry about um lunar neck is the ape or accessory accuracy accessory and um it's very expensive it's almost 200 bill which is maxed out um i think if once again for all like accessory slots if you were thinking about getting an accuracy one you should probably be already geared out with like almost perfect armor and weapons anyway. So by that point, 200 bill is not too difficult. It's a lot of money, no matter how you look at it, but you should already be geared before looking into accuracy accessories. Otherwise, Ogre, Layton, Tungrad, they're all the same. The difference is they look different and one gives Black Spirit Rage. Is Black Spirit Rage worth it? The answer is not really. It's very situational. If you are a PvPer and you do like Siege or Castle Wars, then it's worth it. But for everyone else, it's probably not worth it. And uh, if you ever just wanted to see a Drac 200, would I fly out and like carpet bomb people? That's probably the coolest thing that I've seen montage clips of before. That's cool. But that's about it. Um, Zerker 200 is pretty cracked. But for your average player, uh, I think an Ogre or a Layton is just the way to go. Get whichever one is the cheapest at the time. Um, I have seen people go Sissels five years ago. If you get it now, I think you're just kind of hybrid memeing. I think in this game, it's a little bit different because one thing I would recommend to people is most classes cannot do hybrid builds very well. Some can. Strikers, Mystics can but I think it's overall better for most people to just build in one direction. Like, for example, if you just want full AP glass cannon, do that. If you want to be a tank and full DP, do that. But if you're hybriding, it it works for some, but mostly not for others. It is what it is. And uh, that's just my opinion. Debarekas are the same thing. This is a very hot topic recently, but... But this is like an end game topic that people are talking about. Is a pen disto better than a pen debareka? And the answer is if you have other debareka pieces already, then it's worth it. Because if you have it on a three piece set effect, you get plus 12 AP. And effectively, that is more AP than having a distortion. Plus, you don't lose the um, DP on the side. So if you're only. I know people like to look at gear score and they like to see big number means better. 
but you also have to look at your full stat page as well to see like what is good and what you might be doing so yes technically pen Debereka is better than disto if you have like a pen like uh pen Debereka necklace and belt already but if not which is probably 99 percent of us distos are the way to go dawns are the accuracy version and vahas are the same as distos but from the dungeons effectively the same stats and narc earrings are for people who grind in specific areas or just want more dp um so i don't think they're a bad option just don't go tungrad earrings no matter what you do they were good four years ago and now there's a lot more options for people to get so i think if you were a beginner and you're probably wondering okay so where do i go and you're thinking distos are very expensive i do think that narc earrings are a good op option for entry level as well and then up until you think you get enough to be able to switch into distos um and then at end game obviously you choose the accuracy or Debarekas or stay with distos like honestly all of these are very good options um these are so new to the point where most people won't even be bothered looking for it until maybe like six months down the line so there is zero shot you're getting a pen yeah so <laughs> one of those things that earrings are the things you look at last in terms of progression upgrades like for myself i still have one more pet earring to go and then that would be the last pen accessory that i need like it is what it is progression is time consuming so here's a fun one debareka belts once again best in slot turo belts accuracy version the tay back one i think these are not that great so here's a new concept or mechanic they added so the tay backs belt if you look at the stat under it like right under where the stat is it'll give you the blessing of tay back basically every time you use it it gives you a small a buff for like 60 seconds and so if you compare it like stat wise to a pen um you're losing three ap but you get a burst window of 60 seconds where you get plus 30 ap accuracy and dp i think this is okay like realistically are most people gonna get pens probably not but like here's the thing if you are in a PvP situation or like 1v1 and you have a 60 second burst window where you're doing boss splits, this could be very good. But like getting it is the annoying part, to be honest. Plus, you have to, it, the stats go up based on the tier of enhancement. And so I would love to play around with it. I actually bought a few uh, a while ago. Well, by that, I mean I bought one. I, I have a pry. I just wanted to see what it was all about. And so, yeah, the, the downside is you can't, once you use the skill, it's a 10 minute cooldown and you can't unequip the belt. So you're stuck basically uh, with this on for like an extra nine minutes. And so basically, if you want to use it, you're getting it at like Tet or Pen. So it's not something you worry about for another six months, maybe a year, if you even think it's worth it. Do I think it's worth it? It's extremely situational. And um, most people probably shouldn't worry about it, myself included. I really don't care. If I get it, cool. If not, it's not a big deal. Also, if you get it, you cron every step from base to pen. All right, so mid-tier to endgame players, what do you do? Uh, Fassy Belt is the entry cheap version. Voltara is the equivalent to like Eye of the Ruins where it gives HP on the side. And Tungrad is basically the one extra H, uh, AP. So, I personally have chosen the uh, Voltara side because back when I was uh, getting mine... Um, oh, wow, the price went down a lot. Um, basically, I valued the extra 100 HP over the, well, I guess non-HP version... And I never really thought Tungrad belts were that good because, like, 91 bill. Back when I was looking into belts, these were 100 bill. And 
I don't actually remember how much I bought mine for. I think it was like low 50. So like it's basically the same now. And um, yeah, I just chose the HP route. I don't regret it. Survivability is never a bad thing. And yeah, that's basically it. So here's a few things that I want to talk about now that's a little bit different from last time is we're going to be talking about uh, magic crystals. So as we all know, there are new crystals in this game. These three things are very expensive. They are new and <laughs> red ones just sit on the market. So the ultimate goal is to get one of these three. You can only use one, even if you had all three. They are all considered the primordial crystals. And so if you are a PvEer and you're grinding, you get the yellow one. If you are a defensive player, you get the purple one. And if you are like a hybrid, I guess, you get the red one. I personally think that the yellow one is going to be the hardest to get just because mo like realistically, this game is 99% PvEers. And then there's a very small fraction of players that are uh, PvPers. So I, I believe that the hardest one to get is the yellow followed by the purple. And then obviously there are literally two sitting on the market for red. So get what you can. I personally have one more to get. So like for me, I just have one more for purple or yellow. Then I can combine it into the big one. And I have the... I have the red one already done just because like I, they just filled the orders and I was like, oh, cool. So I got it. I think it's a good temporary one to use. It's not a bad thing. And then if you are a life skiller, these are very important. Try to get the ones you think you need because these are very valuable. This is a very good update for life skillers out there. You just get straight up mastery or XP. So max out your crystal slots. There's no limit to how many you can use. Get the ones you think you need or your favorite life skill and then max out your crystal slots but i think that's it for now so that's really what i wanted to talk about so thanks so much for watching if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button i would love to see you come back and hopefully you learn something and until next month i'll see you guys later and if you're new i'll see you guys tomorrow with uh, more cool videos of various things peace